Got another paper three question to look at. So this one deals with amount of substance. There's a big focus on redox and it's also got electrode potentials in it as well. I hope you like the video and if you haven't already subscribed, please think about subscribing. Anyway, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you wanna try it first. So for part A, we've got to calculate the concentration of the calcium hypochlorite formed from the reaction. So we've got the volume of chlorine at RTP. So we'll turn that into moles. So that's just the volume of chlorine divided by the molar gas volume. So 17.5 moles of chlorine. And then we're going to use the mole ratio 2 to 1 to work out the moles of the um, calcium hypochlorite. So that's coming out at 8.75 moles in 4 metres cubed. Uh, we need that in decimeters cubed. So multiply by 1,000, put it in decimeters cubed. So the concentration is the moles divided by the volume in decimeters cubed. So that's coming out at a concentration of 2.19 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per decimeter cubed. They wanted it in standard form and appropriate number of significant figures is based on the lowest number of significant figures um, in the data. So three is appropriate here. So for the next part, there's the unbalanced equation. I've just put this information into an equation. I'm going to use oxidation numbers to balance this one. And um, obviously we can use that to explain why it's disproportionation. So there's the oxidation numbers of all the chlorine species. And there's a rule that we're going to follow. The total increase in oxidation number has got to be equal to the total decrease in oxidation number in any redox reaction. So you can see that the decrease is 2, whereas the increase is 4. So basically, we're going to have to double the um, calcium chloride species so we get a total decrease of 4. So now we've got that in. We just need to balance the calciums, the easiest way to do it. So we've got three calciums on the right. We've only got one on the left. So if we put a three in front of there. And then for the explanation of why it's disproportionation, it's down to the fact that chlorine has been simultaneously oxidized and reduced in the equation. Um, but we've got to say where this is happening and what the changes are. So chlorine's oxidized from plus one to plus five in the CaClO3 twice but it's also reduced from plus one at the start to minus one in the CaCl2. Moving on to part B, you'll notice I've numbered the three reactions, um, one, two, three, and that's because I'm gonna use these labels now in my answer. It saves me writing down the formulae of the species all the time. So we'll start by explaining the oxidizing agent process. So first thing I'm gonna do is just say what an oxidizing agent is. So obviously an oxidizing agent is an electron acceptor. So we need to find a pair of um, reactions where a chromium ion is accepting electrons. So basically we want the chromium equation to go in the forward direction because that involves the acceptance of electrons. So you can see the electro potential for this is plus 1.33 volts. So the other one that we marry it to has to be less positive than that. So obviously we're talking about systems two and one. So something like this would do as an explanation. So when systems two and one are combined, the Cr2072 minus ions act as an oxidizing agent. And that's because it's more positive electro potential shifts reaction two to the right and reaction one therefore to the left. So we'll just need to combine these two equations um, to generate the overall reaction. Um, so we'll just keep an eye on the electrons. We've got six in system two, and we've got two in system one. So we're gonna to need to treble system one and add it to system two. So that gives us the reaction there, but we need to simplify this because we've got common terms left and right. So the H plus ions are gonna to have to cancel down, which leaves us with this overall reaction here. So we'll do exactly the same for reducing agent. So I'm just gonna say what a reducing agent is. I'm gonna talk about the systems that would see a chromium ion acting as a reducing agent. 
and then I'm just going to combine the two half equations to get the overall equation. So I'll just go through the answer, reducing agent and electron donor. So we need the two reactions where the chromium species is going to donate electrons. So the electrode potential of the other species or the other system needs to be more positive. So we're talking about systems two and three. So when systems two and three combined, the Cr3 plus ions act as reducing agent. Uh, and that's because system two has got a less positive electrode potential than system three. And then its reaction therefore shifts to the left. System three shifts to the right. And that's the unbalanced equation. So we just need to sort out the H pluses and the H2Os this time because we've got both on each side of the equation, which leaves us with this here. Part C, I've sort of put up what we know so far from the information. So student bubbles hydrogen sulfide gas through an acidified solution containing manganate seven ions, those there. So there's going to be H plus ions somewhere in this equation, but I'm just going to leave them out for now. Um, and that forms Mn2 plus ions, manganese two ions, a yellow precipitate, which is sulfur, the element, and one other product. So you've kind of got to take an educated guess here. You've got hydrogen and oxygen not accounted for on the product side. So it's water, isn't it? So the way I'm going to balance this equation is again using the oxidation number method. Um, so what we need to do is work out the oxidation number changes in the reaction. So if we look at the sulfur, it starts at minus two, it goes up to zero, so it's increase of two. The manganese starts out at plus seven and it drops by five to plus two. So we need these to be the same, the total change needs to be the same. So if we um, times the um, sulfur species by five, that'll give us a change of 10 and the manganese species by two, that'll give us a change of 10 for them. Next thing we need to do is sort out the overall charge left and right. So at the moment we've got, um, there's no charge there, two minus on the left and four plus on the right. So we need to put some H plus ions in to bring two minus up to four plus. So that means we need six H pluses on the left. And the final thing we need to do now is just work out what number goes in front of the H2O. So we can use the hydrogens. So two fives are 10 plus six, 16. So we need an eight in front of the H2O. Now, if you don't like that method, um, you could always do it by writing the two separate half equations and then combining them together to get the overall redox reaction. You're giving yourself a bit more work there, but so I would definitely recommend trying to get your head around this method here because it really does help with reactions like this.